Hey, it's David Stanko, the Formula Boss, and I'm here in Central Park in New York City, one of my favorite places in the entire world. I'm here to field some Q&A just for you, so follow along. Happy coloring. So here's a great question. How do I cool down hot roots? From red to orange, hot roots can be hotter than hell. To avoid them, always stay within one to two levels of the natural hair color. If you're working on a first time or virgin head of hair, apply to the mid lengths first, then to the root area, and lastly, to the end. So to fix it after the fact, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First, take a look at the hot roots. What level are they? Find a shade that equals the hotness at the root and select that shade. Maybe it's a level eight or nine. And then use 10 volume and select a shade that's either a natural or a cool tone, and that should help solve the problems. How do I prevent dark endings? So if you believe in refreshing with permanent color, please only do so for the last 10 minutes. Personally, I prefer to use a demi-permanent color. Now, porous ends want to grab color and go darker, so use a demi-permanent, dilute it with clear, so you can reach the maximum processing time the manufacturer recommends, usually 20 minutes. What do I do to banish banding so banding happens in hair color for a number of reasons. It could be changing brands of hair color, it could be changing formulas, and sometimes color corrections come in with banding as well. So if the banding is lighter, here's an idea. Apply your root color first, wait about 15 minutes, and then push the root color into that band to create a little bit of depth. Now, if the banding is darker, apply your base color as normal and then mix up a level 10 natural shade with 20 volume and apply that just above your touch up where the dark banding is. And that should help to lighten the banding and create a bit more of a seamless look. How do I choose the right lightener? Bright colorists use the best lightener for the job that they're doing. I prefer to use an oil lightener for on scalp during double process work. Cream and clay based lighteners, I love using when I balayage or paint. And traditional foil work, I turn to a powdered lightener. I find that they smooth the easiest down the surface of a foil. What kind of tips do you want for promoting on Instagram? What gets 10,000 views? Puppies, cute guys, and the right hashtags. So if you're doing posts about hair color, make sure you post things like balayage, ombre, blonde highlighting, and make sure that you hashtag your salon, city, and state. And studies show that 11 hashtags on a post provide the most return. Any insight on what's hot with hair color? Using intensive conditioners is one of the hottest and latest K-beauty trends on tap right now. They allow you to have highlights that look lived in and grown in, but conditioned and shiny all the same. How do I make lighter summer hair color, darker for autumn, and still keep it healthy? So dump the drastic looks and make subtle color shifts. For example, brunettes that crave a little bit of depth will look good with deeper tones of caramel toffee woven through their base. Gingers can opt for more of an earthy appearance. Think terracotta. And blondes are lucky because they can go either way. It's a matter of increasing the coolness or increasing the warmth for blonde to make them fresh for fall. How often should I touch up my highlights? Now that you have highlights, your maintenance can range from anywhere between two and six months. It all depends on the look you're going for. Two to six months if you like grown in and lived in kind of a highlight, but if you're a little bit more fussy, then you might want to touch up your highlights at least partially about every four to six weeks. How do I prevent hair color from fading? Preventing hair color from fading, this is too good, I have to read this to you. Make sure that you don't get all hot in the shower. Use tepid water temperature along with sulfate-free shampoo. Next, the don't do's. Don't set your blower on high heat. Don't use a flat iron to like 5,000 degrees. 
And if you must heat style it, make sure you use a UV and heat protectant as a base before you start blow drying. And if your reality is more like workout, shampoo, get a blow dry, go to the gym, workout, shampoo, all of that kind of stuff, then you just have to accept the fact that your hair color will begin to dim in about 14 days. What happens if I leave my hair color on too long? Put down the phone and pay attention. Hair color will go dark when you pull it through too long or you have it in contact with the hair that's already dry and sensitized. So watch it and save your text for after your processing is complete. Here's a good one. Do I really need to use the same brand of color and developer? Duh. Yes, of course you have to use the same developer with the same hair color. Developer is designed to liberate the lifting agents properly to make sure the balance of dye is in there properly as well. Sometimes using a developer that's not with the recommended brand can result in a mixture that's too runny or too gooey and that's not a great thing to play with or mix. Stick to the same things. Is it true that color will help to smooth the hair and make it look less damaged? If the color is demi or semi-permanent, then maybe. But the real issue is that when hair is dry, damaged, or sensitized, it's going to readily accept hair color, and that's never a good thing. How can I be sure to choose a hair color that complements my skin tone? Remember, opposites attract. So you don't want to pick a hair color shade that's too close to your complexion. If you have a lot of pink and orange in your skin, then avoid copper and red tones. On the flip side is if you sort of have uh, ashen tones in your skin, stay away from ashy hair colors or you'll end up looking a little bit like a ghost. <laughs> I'm a really dark brunette and I want to be blonde. Can I do it? Sure but consider both time, maintenance, and cost in doing so. The further you travel from your natural hair color, the more damage that takes place. So yes, a super dark brunette can be blonde, but it takes a lot of work, hours of work. Remember, celebrities who make big changes like this have access to tons of cash and pros at their fingertips. And don't forget, there's also a nice option about wigs. Ah, what are natural hair dyes and how do they work? What you think of as natural hair dye really isn't very natural. True natural hair dye are things like walnut shell tincture, coffee, Kool-Aid, beet juice, and they are extremely temporary in terms of effect on the hair. And they have no ability to cover gray or control warm undertones in hair coloring. How does henna work? Like a varnish. True henna comes from the henna plant and it's always black. Yellow, brown, or copper henna have other ingredients mixed into it to achieve the result. They're not compatible with professional hair color or lift and deposit hair color. So always strand test and watch it. If anything weird happens, don't do it. Do natural hair dyes substantially change hair color? Natural hair dyes don't have the components necessary to swell the cuticle, reduce the natural melanin, or facilitate dye development. So you don't get the desired shade you would with traditional hair color. They provide a temporary result at best. What are the main unnatural ingredients in permanent hair dye and what do they do? Permanent hair color contains an alkali source and a dye system which is designed to work together to produce a colored result. It's pretty complex chemistry. It's not like painting a yellow wall black. It ain't no art 101. Can anyone go platinum blonde? Theoretically, yes, but, and it's a big but, the further you travel from your natural color to your blonde, the more damage, the more maintenance, the more time, the more money. Remember, as colorists, we do this on a scale, a numeric scale. One is black, 10 is blonde. It's way easier to move from a number five or level five to 10 than it is to move from a level one, two, or three 
all the way to 10. And remember, most platinum blondes are about a level 12. Should I shampoo before bleaching all of the hair? No, avoid wet or dry shampooing for one to two days before a double process appointment. You want the natural oils to accumulate on the scalp to try to minimize irritation. And make sure that your clients or you don't work out before your appointment. So in this case, you might want to opt for yoga instead of perspiring in SoulCycle. How long does it take for a brunette to lighten to platinum? It all depends. If your natural hair color is dark blonde or lighter, could be about four hours. If your natural hair color is darker, could be up to seven or eight hours. Could be spread out over a two day period. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. Now I'm a platinum blonde. How often should I retouch my roots? Depending on the color contrast, every three to four weeks is acceptable. Remember, if you wait longer, you're forcing the lightener to work too hard on the natural hair, which will result in gold banding. In the 50s, Hollywood blonde perfectionists had their roots touched up with a cotton swab. Remember, Marilyn never had roots. <laughs>